Hello everyone. My name is Aniket Bhurekar and I'm a PhD student at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Today I'm going to be talking about uh, our work on fair and efficient allocations of individual public goods. And this is joint work with my advisor Jubal Gar and Pooja Kulkarni, who is a fellow PhD student. The area of fair division or fair resource allocation dates back to the work of Steinhaus in 1948. And the central question this area aims to address is how do we divide resources among agents such that all participating agents perceive the resulting allocation as fair. So what kind of resources do we consider? Broadly, goods can be categorized as either private or public. A private good like jewelry gives value only to the agent it is assigned. On the other hand, a public good like a book in the library or a park can provide value to multiple agents simultaneously. In this work, we study a model of public goods allocation and its connection to private goods. We also assume that goods are indivisible, so they cannot be broken up into fractional pieces. I will now formally introduce the model of private goods. An instance consists of a set A of N agent, a set G of M private goods, and a set V of utility functions V1 through Vn, where the function Vi tells us the value that agent I has for a subset of, uh, of the goods. Typically throughout this work, we assume that valuation functions are additive, which means that the value that an agent gets from a set of goods is simply the sum of values of goods in that. An allocation X is a partition of the goods into N parts, X1 through Xn, where agent I is assigned the bundle Xi and then gets the utility of Vi of Xi. So in the example on the right, you have three agents and five items. And the allocation displayed on the slide gives the first two items to the orange agent, the third item to the blue agent, and the last two items to the green agent. Note here that agents can have very different preferences over which goods they'd like to receive. And they express these preferences using the, these utility functions V1 through V. So being a very natural model, this model is theoretically well studied and the theoretical solutions have been, have been implemented in practice. For instance, the website Split It provides solutions for a variety of fair division problems. Course Match is an application used to allocate uh, courses fairly to students at the Columbia Business School. And Fair Outcomes is a company that provides fair allocation solutions in divorce settlement and for dispute resolution. I will now introduce the model of public goods uh, that we consider in our work. As before, we have a set of N agents, a set of M public goods, and utility functions V1 through Vn as before. Additionally, we are given an integer K, which is an upper bound in the number of public goods that can be selected. An allocation here is simply a subset of goods that satisfies this cardinality constraint. In the example on the right, there are two agents. There are seven public goods on the top. And here K is equal to three, which means that at most three public goods can be selected. So one can think of K here as a collective budget that the agents have, which they want to jointly use to spend on public goods, which are each priced at one. This interpretation shows how this model is related to participatory budget. Another point to note here is that the model also captures the problem of voting, where N agents want to select K candidates out of M possible candidates. So let me give you a few more motivating examples of this setting and contrast the parameters K, which is the cardinality constraint of feasible allocation, and N, the number of agents. The case of K less than N is well studied, as I mentioned on the previous slide, and captures problems like voting and committee selection. In contrast, the case of K being at least N is not well set. For example, a public library that wants to buy K, good, K goods um, uh, or K books ad adhering to the preferences of N agents, or a committee of N members trying to decide um, K speakers to invite for a year long uh, seminar will typically find that K is at least N. Another important example uh, in this setting is that of diverse search results for a query. Given a query, say of 
you know computer scientist images on a database we would like to out- output k query results which reflect diversity in terms of some n specified features like gender race or ethnicity once again here k is at least n so these examples highlight the importance of the setting where k is at least n and this setting is our main focus in this work a crucial point to note here is that it's important to ensure fairness at an individual level while allocating public good for example it is important to ensure that there are books that reflect the tastes of all agents um, who are readers in the public library one final related model that i want to introduce uh, is that of public decision making which was introduced by konitz of freeman and shah an instance consists of a set of n agents who are faced with m public issues each issue has a few alternatives and the agents must collectively decide on an, on an alternative for each issue the valuation functions are additive and are specified by the numbers vi uh, of j comma l which denotes the value that the ith agent high ith agent has for the lth alternative of the jth issue so here in the example on the right two agents alice and bob have to make two decisions what to eat which is shown on the uh, on the top row and what to watch which is shown on the example uh, which is shown on the bottom row so if alice wants to have pizza while bob doesn't then maybe alice will compromise and agree to watch a movie that bob wants to watch instead of going to the theater once again the idea is that collectively made decisions must also be reasonably fair to participating in as a reminder an allocation here is simply comp- uh, simply comprises of m decision where xj is the decision on issue j so having set up these models in consideration i will now introduce a se- central solution concept to fairly allocate goods the nash welfare of an allocation is the geometric mean of the agent's valuation under that allocation and the maximum nash welfare problem asks us to find the allocation with the highest nash welfare and this allocation is also called the m and w allocation so formally the m and w problems for our three models are labeled as private m and w which searches over all partitions of the goods into n parts public m and w which searches over the space of all k sized uh, all subsets of size at most k and decision m and w which searches over all all decisions on the public issues so maximum nash welfare is a central solution concept in economics and computation and it arose in several different contexts originally in nash's solution to the bargaining problem later in variance work on competitive equilibrium equilibrium with equal incomes and as well as in proportional fairness in network maximum nash welfare is especially interesting because it gives good allocation at least for private goods and public decisions the mnw allocation is efficient in the sense of pareto optimality this means that there is no other allocation which makes an agent better off than she was under the mnw allocation and no agent is left worse off either this is easy to see because a pareto dominating allocation would naturally have a higher nash welfare the mnw allocation is also fair for these models for private goods it satisfies the relaxation of envy freeness and for public decisions it satisfies a relaxation of the fairness notion of proportionality which i will introduce in a bit so given that the mnw allocation is provably fair and efficient for other models we asked if it is fair and efficient for public goods as well to answer this question i will first describe the fairness notion of proportionality we say that an allocation x is proportional if every agent gets at least 1nth share of her value of all the goods which is called her proportional share however proportional allocations need not exist as the following instance shows here there are two agents and six public goods where the first agent likes only the first three public goods and the second agent likes the last three public goods the proportional share of each agent 
is 1.5 because their total value for all the goods is 3 and there are two participating units. If k equals 3, then in any allocation, for instance, the one shown on the slide, there will be some agent by pigeonhole principle who gets a utility of at most one. So in this example, agent two gets a utility of at most, gets a utility of one, which does not meet her proportional. Change. Hence, proportional allocations need not exist in general. This leads us to a relaxation of proportionality called prop one or proportionality up to one good. We say that an allocation is prop one. If for every agent I, there exists a good G that is in the allocation and a good G prime, which is perhaps outside the allocation, such that if I swaps G with G prime, then she gets her proportional G. For example, if agent two removes good G2 and adds good G5, then she gets a utility, utility of two, which meets her proportionality requirement of 1.5. Note here that proportionality and prop one ensure fairness on the individual level while allocating public goods, because these statements ensure a minimum utility level in some sense for all agents. Upfront, it's not even clear that proportional allocations even exist. So going back to our question of whether maximum national fair is fair and efficient for public good, we answer in the positive. We show that any MNW allocation is Pareto optimal and hence is efficient. We also show that it is fair. It satisfies prop one, an, approximate, uh, an approximation of the fairness notion of round robin share. And when k is at least n, it, it also approximate, approximates proportionality. So, so far we saw three models of allocating goods. Private goods, where, um, where goods are private and we want to partition them between agents. Public goods, where agents want to collectively select a subset of goods subject to a cardinality constraint. And public decisions, where agents want to collectively arrive at decisions on public issues. Our next line of investigation is to study if there are any concrete formal connections between the models. Upfront, they don't seem related. But remarkably, we show that there are polynomial time reductions between the maximum national fair problem in these, in these models. That is, private MNW reduces to public MNW and public MNW reduces to decision MNW. So given that MNW allocations are fair and efficient, a third line of inquiry is to investigate the computational complexity of computing such an allocation. The problem is well studied for private goods, and it's known that private MNW is NP hard even when there are only two agents via reduction from the partition problem. But when the valuations are binary, meaning that all values are either zero or one, then the problem has a polynomial time solution. For public goods, a reduction already tells us that the problem is NP hard, but this reduction gives a k less than n, in, that is an instance where the cardinality constraint parameter k is less than the number of agents n. Going beyond just NP hardness, we show that it is NP hard to even approximate the maximum natural fair to any multiplicative factor when k is less than. We consider the case of k being at least and separately and show NP hardness for public MNW when there are only two agents as well as when the valuations are binary. This is in contrast to the private goods case where under in which when the valuations are binary, there is a polynomial time algorithm. Finally, a property of our algorithm uh, of a reduction from um, public MNW to decision MNW also shows that decision MNW is NP hard even when valuations are binary, which is also a new result. So in light of computational, this computational hardness, we turn to approximation algorithms and exact algorithms for special cases. We show that there is an O of n factor approximation algorithm for public MNW when k is at least n. And this algorithm also applies when agents have monotone subadditive values, which generalizes additive values. We say that a function v is subadditive if for any subset SNT of the good, 
v of s union t is at most v of s plus v of t. and we say that a valuation function is monotone if giving more goods does not decrease the value next we show that when the number of agents is constant a dynamic programming based pseudo polynomial time algorithm computes the exact optimal m and w allocation the run the run time here depends on the maximum utility value w and hence as a corollary we obtain that when the number of agents is constant and agent valuations are binary public m and w is in is in is in p or has a polynomial time solution note that relaxing any one of these two constraints renders the problem as np hard as i mentioned in the previous slide so to summarize we study the model of public goods allocation where n agents want to collectively select k out of m given public goods in a fair and efficient manner the mechanism we study for constructing such an allocation is the mnw mechanism which returns the allocation with the highest natural fair, which is the geometric mean of agents utilities under an allocation under the under the allocation we first show that such an allocation is efficient and fair however it's not very easy to compute we show that it's np hard even for two agents or when valuations are binary in the case of k being at least we also devise an approximation algorithm where the approximation ratio is of the order of the number of agents and a pseudo polynomial time algorithm when the number of agents is constant finally we show that the model of public goods is intimately connected to the models of private goods and public decision making by presenting polynomial time reductions between the m and w problems in these models so in the remainder of my talk i want to sketch the reduction from uh, private goods to public goods So, given an instance I of private goods with n agents and m goods, we construct an instance I prime of public goods as follows. We first create two agents in I prime corresponding to the agents in A. So, in this example, these are the orange and blue agents as shown here. We then add m dummy agents, one corresponding to each private good, and the correspondence here is shown by uh by their color okay we then introduce m times n public goods by making n copies of each good in g so for the yellow private good we have two copies um we have two public goods because there are two agents here similarly for the black uh private good we have two public goods uh, likewise for the other two private goods we set the cardinality parameter k to be equal to m which is the number of private goods so in this example k would be 4 so our public goods instance is ready we just have to set up the valuation that is we need to specify the value that agent i in a prime has for the lth copy of the jth good right so each agent i who is not a dummy agent so for instance an orange agent or a blue agent here so the agent that agent i values or values the ith copies of all the public goods at what she valued them in the private goods instance and values all the other goods at zero so for example the orange agent being the first agent values the first copies of all the public goods at what she did in the private goods instance and values the other ones at zero likewise the blue agent values these the second copy of all the of all the of all the goods and values these at zero thus we can write down v vi prime of jl as being equal to vij if i equals l and zero otherwise this essentially records the property that the i agent values the i copy of every good each dummy agent likes public goods of her color so the so for example the yellow agent values both the yellow public goods at value 1 and has value 0 for every other good similarly the black public uh, the, the black dummy agent values the black public goods at value 1 and has value 0 for every other public good in other word the jth dummy agent 
which was created corresponding to the jet public good uh, sorry the jet private good values all public good copies of the jet good and uh, thus we can write v v prime i of jl to be equal to 1 if i equals n plus j which records the property that the jth dummy agent likes all copies of the jet code all other values are zero the reduction is this complete now let's assume that the mnw allocation of i prime gives positive utility to all agents so this means that every agent gets a positive utility. now since the jth dummy agent since the jth dummy agent values only copies of the jth good this means that the jth dummy agent gets at least one copy of the jth good and this holds for every j but since k equals m we are allowed to select m public goods and since there are m dummy agents this means that there is exactly one copy of each good that is selected in the allocation so now suppose we have an allocation that is uh, shown on the right such as the one shown on the right where goods in the red bracket are selected from such an allocation x prime we can construct an allocation x of private goods the main observation is that the ith agent only values the ith copies of goods hence the bundle xi of private goods can be constructed by simply looking at the goods whose ith copies are present in x prime then the value that agent i gets in x is equal to the value that agent i gets in x prime moreover every dummy agent gets a value of exactly 1 putting this together gives us that the nash product or the product of utilities of agents in x equals the product of utilities of agents in x prime and finally it is easy to see that this reduction works in the opposite direction that is from a private goods uh, instance and an allocation of private goods we can construct a public goods instance and an allocation of of the public goods with the same nash product this completes the reduction so there is a minor technicality here what happens if the maximum nash welfare is zero we address this scenario in our paper by carefully modifying this reduction by doubling the number of agents i'd also like to point out that the main technically challenging reduction is from public goods to public decision making and i encourage you to read it in our paper our paper also has almost analogous result results for the lexman optimal um, for uh, lexman optimal allocation which maximizes the utility of the lowest utility agent and subject to that maximizes the utility of the second lowest utility agent and so on our work also opens up several directions for future work firstly the quest for fair and efficient allocations is still open can we get prop 1 plus p allocations in polynomial time for public goods instead of computing them via uh, diamond w allocation which is np hard to compute secondly we could also generalize the model to include costs of public goods and a collective budget for the agents instead of the simple cardinality constraint what is the definition of prop 1 here and what guarantee is this the mnw allocation give finally improving the approximation ratio to better than an o of n factor even for special cases like binary evaluations is a challenging and interesting direction for future work i want to once again display our main results on the model of public goods allocation the maximum nash welfare and lexman mechanism and their ties to the models of private goods and public decision making that brings me to the end of my talk thank you very much for listening